Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at LibreOffice versus OpenOffice going into the year 2017 with the latest update to OpenOffice, which is version 4.1.3. Actually, I believe that's the first update it's had all year. So if we look at the two different programs, you'll notice that they look incredibly similar, and that's actually because they're originally built from the same original source code. So much of the functionality that you have within one program, OpenOffice, is going to also be inside of LibreOffice. Uh, if I recall, the actual story is that LibreOffice was built off of OpenOffice, but OpenOffice was the original, and since then they've diverged a little bit. LibreOffice is the more popular of the two, and it's got a nicer looking website in my opinion. And I would argue that the interface looks a little bit cleaner too, it has nicer icons. But overall, you can notice that much of the same things are going to be located on the hotbars almost identically between the two different programs. And it's not only for the Writer app, it's also for presentation um, and draw as well. If we take a look at the file menu, you can see that all of the different document types that you can create in one, you can also create in the other program. And the differences you'll see throughout the menus aren't really differences of functionality so much as they are differences of what should be placed where. So for instance, if we go down here, you'll see that there's a template section, digital signatures, that doesn't exist over here in LibreOffice. Um, well, not down there at least. You can still find templates up here towards the top next to wizards. And if we look at the initial hotbars, there's this document as email button over here in OpenOffice Writer, which does not exist inside of LibreOffice Writer. Now, as you can see, that does not mean that in LibreOffice Writer you can't email a document that you just wrote up or anything like that. Just that that specific functionality has been put on the main hotbar inside of OpenOffice. So, speaking of those two hotbars, one thing that is kind of drastic over here and the main hotbar is that there's a lot of extended functionality in this um, openable drop-down menu in LibreOffice, but if we go to the equivalent inside of OpenOffice Writer, it's a lot more tame. I suppose if there's one thing I do like about LibreOffice Writer, um, outside of the icons, is that down here in the bottom it does display the word and character count by default. I think that's a really cool thing to have, especially if you're writing school or business papers. Especially if you're writing school papers, there may be at a minimum word requirement, so being able to keep track of that automatically is going to be fairly helpful. Now let's switch to Impress. You can see they even have the same name in both apps, just going back to show how similar these apps are because they're built from the same original code. The decisions on the UI here are a little bit different. You can see down at the bottom all of the shapes that you can add to a PowerPoint slide or an Impress slide, in this case it's on Microsoft. Um, those are all down here at the bottom for OpenOffice, but on LibreOffice Impress, they're mostly up there on the tab. Now, that's not to say you can't customize the interface. It would be very easy to just go ahead and drag this bar up there to the top, and once you've done that, essentially they kind of become the same thing. So outside of these little functionality tweaks like an audio or video button over here on the bar, not to say that you couldn't add audio or video in OpenOffice as well, what's the real difference between these two applications? And I think it still comes down to how often the two apps are updated. As I mentioned, before 4.1.3 in OpenOffice, the last update was sometime in 2015, so that's about waiting a year to get an update. And what actually changed in those updates? According to the change log on filehippo.com, key security vulnerability fixes, support for new language dictionaries, bug fixes, and enhancements to the build tools for developers. So honestly, not much has really even changed for OpenOffice 4.1.3. But if we go over to LibreOffice.org, they have a nice new features article where you can see what they're adding to the program, power features for the enterprise, faster and smoother document editing. And we can see here, they've apparently got a new slide panel in the properties sidebar. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at that. So here you can see one actual difference between the two apps. The slide panel has been added in, which allows you to define the screen format, basically the rate screen ratio, what template the master slide is going to use, what background or background color you're adding into the slide that is in question right here. So for instance, we could 
give it a background color, create a new slide, and define each of those individually here, which I gotta say is a nice thing to be able to do. But beyond just having a couple new features, you can actually get video documentation from the organization itself in these videos that they've put out, which is pretty cool. Now ultimately, even with minor differences like having audio or video buttons over in one app that aren't there in the other one, and having a slide panel over here in the properties uh, sidebar, the differences between LibreOffice and OpenOffice are still pretty minuscule. What it would come down for me is mostly just how the UI looks, honestly, and I think in LibreOffice it does look slightly better. Let's take one more look at the writer interfaces. Um, just the way that these icons are set up, the ruler bar, it just looks a little bit more modern, and I think having that slight visual edge does give an advantage to LibreOffice, in addition, of course, to how the app is more frequently updated, has a more active community, and overall a better website. So here, just to show Apache OpenOffice's website, it's not really as clear, in my opinion, on how to go about gathering information, finding videos to watch. So ultimately, if you like one of these two apps, you're probably going to like the other one because, once again, they're built from the same source code. There's not a huge amount of differences out there. But I would say that they're both perfectly solid. Um, probably the best free uh, Office Suite software that's out there. So you can't really go wrong with either one. So anyway, I've been Chris. Thank you guys for watching this video on LibreOffice versus OpenOffice, and hopefully I'll see you guys in my future content.